hi guys so in this short video uh, we are will be discussing about uh, design of an iar uh, filter based on bilinear transformation okay uh, so here the design procedure is same as like the analog filter um, the final thing is uh, what is the what the bilinear transformation is going to do in this case is we have this uh, so our ultimate objective is to transform the designed analog filter into an equivalent desired digital filter okay so how this transformation is going to ha happen that is due to, uh, by means of the bilinear transformation so we might have discussed uh, the uh, previously about the impulse invariance method okay based on impulse invariant transformation so the drawback of the impulse invariant transformation is many to one mapping many to one mapping of poles from s domain to z domain or i can say, say that from s plane while mapping the analog poles from s plane to the z plane and the poles which are separated by uh, 2 pi by t radians by an angle uh, 2 pi by t radians are mapped into the same location on the z plane so this results in aliasing results in aliasing aliasing or otherwise in simple terms this is referred as overlapping overlapping of the samples so what is the effect of overlapping so overlapping will result in loss of information okay overlapping will result in the loss of information so to avoid this or to overcome this advantage we'll go with the bilinear transformation to overcome this drawback we go with bilinear transformation okay so in in impulse invariance method what we did in impulse invariant uh, transformation for converting your uh, ha of s into a desired h of z so what we did the step what we followed us uh, we convert we have broken up this k equal to 0 to n the transfer function s minus pk is being transformed into summation k equal to 0 to n ck in the denominator we had 1 minus exponent of pkt z inverse so this one we led to many to one mapping of poles okay so now what we are going to do here is we are going to modify this okay so when we apply bilinear transformation so what there are what we are going to do is we are going to redefine the relation between redefine the relation between s plane and the z plane so in what way we are going to make it so simply 
I'm going to substitute s is equal to 2 by t into 1 minus z inverse upon 1 plus z inverse where t is the sample time expressed in seconds okay so while doing so to avoid the uh, warping uh, frequency wrapping warping uh, that is i need now uh, when i perform this bilinear transformation what i need to do is i should have an uh, the frequency mapping analog frequency and the digital frequency must be mapped linearly so let me consider this is my analog frequency and this is my digital frequency so actually what i expect is i need a linear transformation linear relationship between this analog uh, analog frequency and the digital frequency um, but if you see that in actual how the frequency will be is the relationship is uh, in this one it will linear over certain range and then later on it goes with this one so what is the effect of this okay the actual relation is non-linear so to overcome this, this problem is called the warping effect okay so to overcome this warping effect to make the relationship between the analog frequency and uh, the digital frequency linear to make the relationship between analog and uh, digital frequencies linear we perform warping warping of frequencies using the relation that analog omega is equal to 2 by t tan of omega divided by 2 okay so for small values of omega this uh, for small values uh, tan theta is nearly equal to theta and therefore we have uh, omega equal to omega t okay so what we do here is this is so called the pre warping okay uh, so in this one what we do here is in the design step whatever the analog uh, and the specification will be given in the previous case what we did is the specifications will be given in terms of the digital frequency with the digital frequency we will design the analog filter and we will be transforming it using either uh, the uh, that is impulse invariant transformation okay here also almost the procedure remains same only one thing what we are going to do is in the initial phase we will perform the warping of the frequency okay um, before designing the analog filter okay before designing the analog filter we will apply we will apply this relation we will apply this relation to pre warp the frequencies in a colloquial term how i can expand uh, how i can uh, explain this pre warping is suppose if in this my range of frequency the, the in this range of frequencies of my analog frequency my digital frequency seems to be linear beyond this when it goes what happens it becomes a non linear relationship okay so now what i can do is pre warp by means of pre warping i am just expand i am just extending uh, uh, expanding this relation okay so what happens now when compared to this and this because of pre warping 
I can increase the range of linearity. So that is what we are doing it. That frequency mapping only we are doing it over here. Okay. So if you see the design procedure, if I see the design procedure, first step, what we need to do here is from the given specification, we have to find the pre warping analog frequency. So, from the given specification, find the pre warping analog frequencies. using uh, analog is equal to that is analog frequency omega is equal to tan of omega by 2 now using omega computed in step 1 design the analog filter as usual the design procedure ok whatever the thing we had the, so we have we followed and that is computing the order that alpha p um, uh, omega p omega s alpha p alpha s where all these procedure will be uh, will be followed uh, following this ok earlier design there is no change at all initially what are the uh, frequency they will be giving directly we will start computing the uh, your order of the filter and then uh, we will find the transfer function and all now in this one what we have a slight difference is there before instead of take, uh, directly taking the given filter specification we will be finding out the new frequencies ok so here whatever it is if it is omega s or omega p whatever it is the relation remains same uh, let us see the new analog frequency omega s can be computed as 2 by t tan of omega s divided by 2 and similarly omega p is equal to 2 by t tan of omega p by 2 ok there is no change in uh, these values and all there is no specification so normally if the sample rate is specified if sampling frequency is specified take t is equal to 1 by fs where fs is the sampling frequency if not specified assume t equal to 1 second ok then for converting your h a of s to h of s so substitute s is equal to 2 by t 1 minus z inverse upon 1 plus z inverse ok so this must be substituted in h of s means that h of z is the desired frequency is given by h a of s provided the s is evaluated at 2 by t into 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse ok so this is the uh, problem step about the bilinear transformation so let us consider a small example that is whatever the, uh, in the bilinear transform in impulse invariant transformation we consider the same let us consider the same transfer function h of s is equal to 2 upon s plus 1 into s plus 2 with t equal to 1 second 
find h of z by bilinear transformation okay so now in this case what we are going to do here is now it's quite simple task so let me so let us take it from here h of z is equal to h of x at okay so now this is equal to So I'll be having that and here t is equal to 1. So therefore h of z is equal to 2 divided by 2 into 1 minus z inverse by 1 plus z inverse plus 1. then 1 minus z inverse upon 1 plus z inverse plus 2 then again within this term we need to take the LCM and within this term we need to take the LCM then multiply these two terms you can take the and this uh, denominator term once you take the LCM and we make it then this denominator term will move to the numerator so if that is the case you will get 2 into 1 plus z inverse the whole square divided by 4 into 3 minus z inverse Okay, uh, so now I can be 2, so this is equal to 1 plus z inverse the whole square divided by 6 minus 2 z inverse. Okay, so like this we can uh, have it. This is your final transfer function or else again uh, this can further be simplified uh, in this way. Uh, 0 0.166 into 1 plus z inverse the whole square divided by 1 minus 0 0.33 z inverse. The question may be there why we have taken uh, in this way because when we go for the implementation we need it uh, the uh, terms in this format only in this format 1 plus or 1 minus some term into z inverse like that that is for the implementation okay so there ends the bilinear transformation filter design by bilinear transformation technique